The lead-up event to Pokemon Go Tour Sinnoh has just been announced. And yeah, I got a lot of thoughts regarding it. Now, before we get into today's video, let me tell you about a game that I've been playing. You've heard me talk about Shadow Legendary Raids in Pokemon Go, but have you heard of this game called Raid Shadow Legends? That's right, they are the sponsor for this video. Seriously, you need to try out this game. I'm sure you've heard of them by now, but now is the time to actually try it out. Download the game now for iOS, Android, or PC using the QR code that you see on screen. It's completely free to play and you will get a bunch of epic heroes to start off. Raid is an epic free-to-play fantasy RPG with over 800 characters across different factions. Aside from the stunning visuals, there is so much content in this game. You could jump into a story mode campaign, crawl through dungeons, engage in PvP arenas, and take on some seasonal challenges as well. The game is similar to Pokemon Go in that you collect a bunch of powerful characters as you play the game, and you can power them up in a variety of different ways. But something that Raid does have that Pokemon Go does not is the ability to form clans and take on unique challenges with your friends. Believe me when I say this, the game is a lot of fun. Right now, there is an update for raiding the Cursed City, and you do not want to miss it. So what are you waiting for? Use my link in the description down below, or scan the QR code that you see on screen, download Raid Shadow Legends, join my clan in-game so that we can start raiding bosses together. And a big thank you to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. Alright, now let's get right into the content. How's it going everyone? It's me, it's Conjunsula. I hope you're having a good day, and welcome to today's Pokemon Go video. Yeah, it's extremely cold outside, and it's actually raining and snowing at the same time right now, which is very odd, and it's not pleasant. So I'll try to keep this brief. We are getting a Road to Sinnoh event that's going to be a lead-up to the Global Go Tour event. And I'm actually kind of surprised by this. I think Niantic is doing a lot of things that goes against what a lot of players have been suggesting, and I think it does this event a huge disservice. So we'll get more into that later, but real quick, let's go over the details for this event. Niantic recently posted an update talking about the Road to Sinnoh event. Trainers, it's time for a Sinnoh celebration. Before Pokemon Go Tour Sinnoh Global kicks off for trainers around the world, jump into some Sinnoh-inspired fun during the Road to Sinnoh event. Trainers attending Pokemon Go Tour Sinnoh Los Angeles can get the party started even sooner. Check out the event site for more details on how to attend. Pokemon Go Tour Sinnoh Global is a free event available to trainers on Saturday, February 24th, and Sunday, February 25th from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. local time. On Monday, February 19th at 10 o'clock a.m. local time until Friday, February 23rd at 10 o'clock p.m. local time, we're going to have the Road to Sinnoh event. This event is going to feature a bunch of paid research tickets. You can enhance your journey to Sinnoh with new event tickets. Enjoy additional bonuses, event-themed timed research, and new avatar items. Perfect for trainers who want to make the most of this Sinnoh celebration. Trainers taking part in Pokemon Go Tour Sinnoh Global on February 24th and 25th can take advantage of these ticket bonuses throughout the event weekend. Plus, don't forget that you can give tickets to your Pokemon Go friends and share the fun. These tickets will be available for purchase from Monday, February 19th at 10 o'clock a.m. local time until Sunday, February 25th at 6 p.m. local time. Trainers can purchase either one or both of these tickets. Each ticket features unique timed research tasks, rewards, and bonuses. The first ticket is going to be Road to Sinnoh Raids. For $5 USD or the equivalent pricing tier in your local currency, you'll be able to access event-exclusive timed research and other raid-themed bonuses. The timed research rewards for Road to Sinnoh Raids include the following. 10 Dialga Candy, 10 Palkia Candy, 5 Heatran Candy XL, 5 Giratina Candy XL, 5 Cresselia Candy XL, 5 Darkrai Candy XL, as well as an Eevee Fan Mask. Plus, enjoy the following bonuses. Additional 5,000 experience from completing raids, one additional candy award for catching Pokemon in raids, and two additional raid passes from spinning photo discs at gyms each day. Now, this is not the only ticket that they are offering. There's also going to be a hatch ticket. For $5 USD or the equivalent pricing tier in your local currency, you'll be able to access event-exclusive timed research and other egg hatching themed bonuses. Timed research rewards for Road to Sinnoh Hatch include encounters with the following Pokemon, Pachirisu, Shatot, and Carnivine. Timed research rewards for Road to Sinnoh Hatch will also include the following avatar item, Pikachu Fan Mask. 
Plus, enjoy the following bonuses. Two times Hatch experience, two times Hatch candy, and two times Hatch stardust. Now, don't forget that you could also give these tickets to other trainers as well. As long as they are your friend in your friends list and you have a friendship level of great or higher. Now, during this Road to Sinnoh event, we're gonna see the following wild encounters. You're gonna see an increased spawn rate of Turtwig, Chimchar, and Piplup. And you might also come across Grottle, Monferno, and Prinplup as well. Yeah, not too excited about this. There was some opportunities for them to include regionals into this, and I think that would have been way more exciting, but we're just getting the Sinnoh starters and an increased rate of them. I don't think that's necessarily that exciting. Maybe out of these three, Piplup is the one that you will want to farm up, considering that Empoleon is PvP relevant, but aside from that, this is very disappointing. Now, in raid battles, this is where it gets kind of interesting. In one-star raids, we are, of course, getting the three Sinnoh starters. And in three-star raids, we're getting their evolved forms, Grottle, Monferno, and Prinplub. But in five-star raids, we're going to have Darkrai on Monday, February 19th, Cresselia on Tuesday, February 20th, you're going to have one of the Lake Trio Pokemon, depending on what region you live in, on Wednesday, February 21st. Then we're going to have Heatran on Thursday, February 22nd. And then Origin Form Giratina on Friday, February 23rd. I think it's interesting that they're going to have a different 5-star raid every single day leading up to the Sinnoh Go Tour event. There's a couple here that actually stand out. First and foremost, Heatran is really good. Giratina Origin Form is, of course, a standout. And I think Cresselia is going to be a high priority as well. Darkrai is a decent Dark-type raid attacker, but of course, it did fell off quite a bit with the release of Hydreigon with Brutal Swing, as well as Tyranitar with Brutal Swing. So that one alongside the Lake Trio might be ones you can skip, but for the rest of them, they're actually pretty good and worth going after. Now, hatching from 2km eggs during this event, you're going to see Budu, Chingling, Bonsly, Hapini, Munchlax, Riolu, and Mantike. All of these are baby Pokemon, and they can potentially be shiny. And of course, the shiny forms of these baby Pokemon are highly sought after. So it might be worth hatching a bunch of eggs during this event, especially if you buy that egg hatching ticket. Now, during this event, there's going to be a couple of event bonuses, and these are going to be for everyone, regardless if you buy a ticket or not. Any egg that you place in incubators during this event is going to have a half hatch distance. The remote raid pass limit is going to be increased to 10 from Monday, February 19th to Thursday, February 22nd. And there will be no limit on remote raids from Friday to Sunday. So that's interesting. Basically, they're going to be allowing you to do a lot more remote raiding during this event. And I think that's kind of interesting. I wonder if they're testing the waters or they want to get a lot of revenue leading up to the free global tour event. I really do not know what the case may be, but if you want to do a whole bunch of remote raids, just know that they are increasing the limit and there's going to be unlimited remote raids from Friday to Sunday. Now, during this event, there's going to be a free timed research that's going to award you with encounters with Heatran, Origin Form Giratina, Cresselia, and Darkrai. So you're going to be getting yourself some free legendaries and mythicals, which is always a good thing. So I'm really glad they're doing that. There are, of course, going to be field research tasks related to the Sinnoh region, and it's all going to be themed around the GoTour event. These tasks will probably involve catching Sinnoh Pokemon and will award you with Sinnoh Pokemon. They're worth checking out if you want to get a bunch of Pokemon from field research tasks. I really do not know what they're going to award, but yeah, it's going to be quite interesting. Let's see what ends up happening with that. There's also going to be new avatar items and stickers related to the Sinnoh region. I really like this Giratina outfit that you can get. I think it's actually pretty hilarious. It might be one worth going after, but it probably will cost you a lot of Poke Coins. But there is going to be a free avatar t-shirt that you can get during this event. And it's going to be the Go Tour t-shirt. And that's always a really cool one. If you have the t-shirt in real life, you can have your character match it in-game with this t-shirt. So yeah, overall, very interesting what Niantic is trying out. They're relying very heavily on paid research tickets for this event, and there's nothing else really going on. Like, aside from the raid battles, I don't think they are doing anything with the wild spawns, aside from having starters appear everywhere. And that's a little disappointing, but it's also kind of expected. It's kind of similar to what they did last year. And I really do not like the fact that they're throwing so many paid research tickets at us. But the one caveat is that the global event is going to be free this year. So this might be their way of actually monetizing it. And that totally makes sense. However, I still do not like the fact that this event feels a bit lackluster, especially after the really good Go Battle Week that we've been having in Pokemon Go. I made a video earlier today talking about why I think the Go Battle Week has been so successful. 
and it looks like they're doing the polar opposite of that for this particular event. And again, I do understand that some of the things that they are doing in this event is leading up to the Go Tour event, but I feel like they could have done a lot more. Yeah, they're saving a lot of the hype and all the Pokemon spawns for that weekend, but I still think it would have been nice if we had more than just the starter Pokemon as wild spawns. It's going to be really interesting and I'm looking forward to this event regardless, and it's mainly because of the rating, but aside from that, I really do not think this event is meant to be anything special, it's just supposed to lead us towards the Go Tour event, which is supposed to generate all of the hype, and we'll see if it actually succeeds in doing that. Now between the two paid research tickets, I would say that the raid one is definitely going to be more worthwhile. Unless you have a whole bunch of incubators saved up and you want to get those regionals, then yeah, maybe the hatch one is going to be worth it, but I still think between the two, it's only the raid one that you need to get. You will have opportunities to hatch those regionals during the weekend of the global tour event, and aside from that, I really do not think it's worth spending the money. But who knows, maybe there's some players out there who have the extra cash and would like to get those regionals early, and you do have the opportunity to get the shiny forms of those regionals as well. That's something you should also keep in mind. But again, I'm really disappointed by this event. I think it could have been a lot more special, but at the same time, I totally understand why it is what it is. And yeah, let's hope that the Go Tour event is going to be really hype because if this event is any indicator for what the event is going to be like, I think it's going to be really disappointing and that's really unfortunate. I mean, the origin forms of Palkia and Dialga are not generating as much hype as the primal forms of Kyogre and Groudon did last year. And I think that's a very big disappointment because I think both of those Pokemon do have the potential to be really cool, especially with their new abilities. But I think Niantic kind of dropped the ball with how those abilities work, and I think a lot of players are just seeing it as one and done for a lot of those Pokemon. I mean, <laughs> the big thing with last year with Primal Kyogre and Groudon is that you had to do a lot of them in order to get enough Mega Energy or Primal Reversion Energy, whatever it is, in order to do a bunch of Primal Reversions. And this year, there really is no incentive to do a whole bunch of Origin Form Palkia and Dialga. Maybe because there is an RNG factor to whether or not you get those abilities. I really do not know what the rating is going to be like, but yeah, I do think it's going to be a step down from last year. Uh, but we'll just have to wait and see. I'm still looking forward to it. But in any case, yeah, that's going to be it for this video. Definitely share your thoughts regarding this event down below. Do you think it's an event that's deserving of hype, or do you think it's a total blunder on Niantic's part? Let me know what you think about the paid research tickets as well. Do you think Niantic is doing too many of them, or does it make sense that they would have paid research tickets for this specific event, mainly because of the Go Tour event that's happening at the end of it? Let me know those thoughts, and let's have a great discussion. And thank you so much for making it to this point in the video. If you ended up enjoying it and found it to be informative make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if it's your first time here and also don't forget that little bell so you can stay up to date on whenever i upload videos now i want to give a quick shout out to all my patrons on patreon you make this channel content possible if you want to support my channel in any way big or small then make sure you go and check out the links in the description below for every single member of my patreon family they get a permanent spot on my in-game friends list so if you want to interact with me in some way within pokemon go like with remote raids or the friendship system then make sure you go and check out my patreon also, if you want to support my channel in a different way, you can do so by following me on social media. My handle is at Kanjinsula, and I'm on the platforms that you see on screen. Alright, and that's going to be it. I'm Kanjinsula, be safe, have fun, love yourself, and I'll catch you all later.